guys, fans of the channel know that I love the round watercolor format. I find it really inspiring. I have spent some time playing with the Door Arts watercolor round, which is a round watercolor block, but it's cellulose based and I wanted something cotton rag. I've also reviewed the Magnani 1404 cotton rag watercolor block, and while I liked it, I haven't had a chance to field test it just yet. Today, I am super excited to do the mud test as well as the field test for the Paul Rubens 100% cotton rag watercolor block, and I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. If you're interested in more small, cute, and portable watercolor, I hope you guys will check out my Maritini watercolor review and my Maritini watercolor field test. I'll be sure to link that down in the description below. So we have a whole lot of painting and reviewing to do, so let's jump in it and get started. about a lot of different Paul Rubens products here on the channel from Paul Rubens Tubins watercolor paints to Mei Liang student grade watercolor paints to some Paul Rubens papers. Specifically, we've taken a look at their 100% cotton watercolor pad and their iridescent watercolor paper. They also make a very cute watercolor pochette or poche available in hot press and in cold press. This is the hot press version. Super cute. And they also make a round watercolor pad. And I've talked about round watercolor and mixed media papers here on the channel before. We've talked about the Dora Arts cellulose-based watercolor paper. We've talked about the Mitrina mixed fiber paper. So this is cellulose and cotton rag. And we've talked about the, it's sold as a watercolor paper, but I would say it's a mixed media paper. It's round craft watercolor paper from no particular brand that I could find, but all of these, all of these were purchased off of AliExpress. So today I wanna to take a look at something a little bit unusual, a little interesting, at least to me. This is the Paul Rubens watercolor block. This is a round watercolor block and this is a cotton rag paper. So I'm particularly excited about it because I do really enjoy the round watercolor format. I find it to be quite inspiring and I like using it but I don't necessarily like mixed fiber papers. And sometimes I'd like to paint on something a little bit nicer than cellulose. So I'm hoping that I'll love this paper. This was purchased off of AliExpress. This is my first time reviewing it here on the channel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the quality of the paper. We're gonna do a mud test. And then we're also going to do a field test on this paper where I create at least one illustration to see how it handles in a real world watercolor setting. I'm really looking forward to this because in general, I've truly enjoyed Paul Rubin's products and I'm particularly excited about this one today. So as you guys can see, I really do like the round format. I think it's a great way to break up what might otherwise become kind of routine and kind of monotonous. Now, this was done on the Dora Arts round, so it's a cellulose paper. It does take alcohol marker and mixed media quite well, so it definitely has its place. These were all done on the Maitina or Martini watercolor round. That's the mixed fiber paper. And that one's not as fun to paint on. And then this was just, I used a round lid from something to create a round template. And this was painted on, I believe, Blick Studio cotton rag watercolor paper. So before this, you either had to make your own round watercolor blocks, which is totally possible, if not necessarily the best use of your time, or you had to kind of trace something to get that round effect. Now, I think I misspoke or I like fibbed a little earlier. Uh, um, Magnani 1404 makes round watercolor blocks as well. In fact, I've reviewed them here on the channel. I can't believe I forgot them, but I'm still really excited and really interested to see what Paul Rubens has to offer today. This block of watercolor paper sure is shiny. It has a really reflective surface. And I believe there's like 
three different covers, the pink, a black cover, and the blue one, and each one, I believe, denotes different things. So this is cotton rag paper. It's 300 GSM, or about 140 pounds. It's cold press, and that's usually what the cover color denotes, is hot press, cold press, or I believe rough press, with pink, I think, being the hot press. So the blue is the cold press. There's 20 pages in this, and this thing is pretty tiny. It's 10.5 by 10.5 centimeters. Or just a little smidgen over four inches. It is shrink wrapped and there's not a whole lot of information on it that is in English. I believe this is a repetition of what was on the front. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to carefully, not cut myself, open this. Top sheet on this pad seems to be, for the most part, affixed to it. So I'm going to use my handy Paul Rubens watercolor block remover. Uh, defenstrator and here I don't know if you guys can see here's the gap in the glue so that would be where you're meant to slide your palette knife or your kunai you know whatever you're using this is a very <laughs> tight watercolor block this is actually a bit of a challenge to remove which isn't the worst thing and underneath we have what seems to be some nice watercolor paper. This is very similar to the 100% cotton rag block that I showed you guys. And I do believe I have a mud test for that and a field test for that. So I'm gonna link that in the cards and in the description below. So what's next is for us to do our mud test. So if you're new here, first off, hi, I'm Becca. I'm a watercolor comic artist and when I review art supplies, a, almost everything I review here is purchased out of pocket with funds from my Patreon or from my own money earned from teaching art classes. So I try to be as unbiased as possible. When a company does send me something, I do disclose it in the review. So I try to be as honest about that as possible because I want to enable you guys to make the decision that's best for you. Uh, since I am a watercolor comic artist, it does mean I bring something a little bit different, a little bit unusual to the table in terms of art supply reviews because everything I review is through the lens of using it for watercolor illustration or making comics with it. And if you're interested in learning more about making your own comics, I've got some great playlists here on the channel that I hope you guys will check out. And if you're interested in seeing more of my art, I know I showed you some a little while ago, you can head on over to 7inchcara.com and read my comic for freezies as a webcomic. If you're a fan of the Dead Tree format, you can purchase volume one and volume two through the Natto Shop. I'll have a link to that down in the description below. Or you can check me out on Instagram, Twitter, or ArtStation. I'll have links to all those in the description below as well. So with that out of the way, what is a mud test? The mud test is when I pile three layers of watercolor wet into wet. I try to get as much pigment on the paper as possible over the course of three days. So I do a layer and I let it dry fully. I do another layer and I let it dry fully, rinse and repeat. And that's gonna give us a lot of information for how well this watercolor block, this watercolor paper will handle when we're doing our field test illustration. It's gonna tell us whether the paper's gonna peel itself off the block and no longer stay secure, like what happened with the Sennelier watercolor paper. It's gonna tell us if we're gonna have issues with the watercolor relifting, uh, becoming muddy over the layers. It's gonna tell us whether this is a good paper for granulating watercolors because it really, really encourages the paint to granulate. And it's gonna just give us a good idea of what quality this paper is. Now, I do have experience with Paul Rubin's watercolor paper in the past, and it's been a great experience. I actually really like it. So I have high hopes for this block and block, don't fail me now. So one of the great things about a watercolor block is if you watch my Maritini watercolor review, you know I call it the Danger Pringle. I call it the Danger Pringle for a reason. It's because the paper, as it absorbs water, even if you've secured it, even if you've taped it down to something, it curls up into a Pringle shape. And that's not so great for painting. 
So I'm hopeful that this block will hold my paper nice and secure, which gives us a nice, even flat surface to paint on. For our mud test, I figured what better paints to use than the Paul Rubens Tubins. I really like these paints. I used these when I did the Paul Rubens watercolor paper review. And uh, let me just show you guys these paints. These start out as tube paints and uh, they live in this handy dandy palette here that came with the set and I actually have a review and field test of this palette if you're interested in it as well. But what I like about this palette is you've got granulating colors, you've got transparent colors, you've got staining colors, you've got opaque colors, and they're all quality watercolors. So we're going to be able to tell a lot about this pad of watercolor paper from using these paints. Also, I just really like these paints. These are good paints. So realistically, they're not gonna turn to mud. They're not gonna be overly prone to lifting. So I'm putting good paint on what I hope is good paper. So we should have good results. So the mud test is a three day project. Basically what I do is I absolutely saturate this paper with water and paint and then I let it dry fully overnight and then I come back at it the next day, do the same, let it dry fully again and then on the third day I fully saturate it again and let it dry. So um, this isn't just me like abusing the paper while it's open and still wet to try and make it fail. That's not really what I'm looking for because that's not really what I do when I'm just normally painting. I want to see how this will handle um, just from kind of my normal painting, uh, gee, techniques, maneuvers, something like that. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. This is day one of the mud test and this paper seems like it should be able to handle a lot of water, but I did notice that there's some seepage where there's a gap in the glue. It seems to be the same paper as the large rectangular blocks. I'll make sure to link those in the cards for you because I did review those. It's lovely to paint on. It seems like it's going to take a lot of pigment and color and allows for soft diffused granulated blending. There was no real buckling or kipping and the glue seems to do a good job holding the paper tight. There might be a smidge of buckling where there's a gap in the glue. So I am going to allow it to dry overnight, but first I have a little bit of high hyperlapse drying for you guys because there's something just so satisfying about watching paint dry super duper sped up. But as you guys can see, I'm able to put a lot of layers on this paper without it turning to total mud. Hmm, hyperlapse drying. So this took about 30 minutes to dry. So this is day two, spritzing our Paul Rubens with some water just to activate it. I apologize for the flickering there. I use LED lights in my studio and they can be really weird when it comes to slow-mo. So here is our first layer, all nice and dry. It dried nice and tight. There's a slight ring around the circumference. That might be where the glue uh, kind of seeps in and maybe affects the paper and the colors dried fairly bright and vibrant. So now we're on to our second layer, our day two. And I went ahead and I went in with a lot of water and a lot of pigment, no pre-wash first, just a bunch of saturated color. And it seemed to really take it like a champ. Even when adding in opaque colors, they diffused rather than turning to mud. And while still wet, you can see the first layer of color, which means this paper is probably great for glazing. On such a small pad, watercolor can be a bit of a challenge, so I'd recommend working with a smaller brush than what I'm using here. The paper did puff up a bit, but it did a great job of holding itself tight and dealing with everything that I threw at it. And here's that beautiful hyperlapse drying footage. 
Here's day three of the mud test, still using the Paul Rubens Tubins watercolor paper. So the colors from day two dried misty and vibrant in the best way. The upper rose over Prussian blue is absolutely gorgeous. Paul Rubens knows how to make a watercolor block, that's for sure. It dried flat with no real peeling, although there's some initial seepage from day one where there was a gap in the glue. There was some reworking and relifting with the Prussian and some of the more opaque colors. The worst thing about this paper is water control around the edges. It's just maybe too small a pad for as much water as I'm throwing at this. Now, I do handle things a little bit differently when we get to the field test, so make sure you keep watching because I'm gonna paint two beautiful flowers in watercolor for you guys. And seriously, painting on this paper is so relaxing and can be so much fun. I really wanted to go in and be super self-indulgent and do some slow-mo for you guys. But oh, that flicker is awful. I'm definitely aware of it. And I'm going to be taking precautions when I set up my new studio so that we don't have those issues. Because I would love to share delicious slow motion, watercolor, wet into wet effects with you guys. It's just so satisfying and fun to watch. But I know that flicker is whole. Oh, awful. I'm going to make sure I put a warning in the description for you guys in case any of you guys have seizure issues. I'm so sorry about that. You can skip that part. But you guys can see how the paint just kind of diffuses on this paper even though it's totally saturated. With cheaper papers you would start to get lifting up. It would start to leave like marks on the paper where it picks up the prior colors rather than accepting even more color on the paper. course we've got that beautiful hyperlapse footage of the paint and the paper drying tightening up and it gives you a, guys an idea of the color shift this is day four of our paul rubens watercolor round review the past few days have uh, actually been kind of null because I haven't actually been able to get back to this for a couple of days. So really, we're, we're more like on day six, but we'll ignore this. It's had plenty of time to dry. So the past, quote unquote, three days, at least the past three days you guys have seen, we've been doing mud tests and it seems to take mud testing like a champ. It takes it pretty much like the regular Paul Rubens block. The only problem I really can see, and it's honestly not to be not expected, is the gap where the pad where you're meant to slip your palette knife in, it is a weak point. And on a pad as small as this, it is hard to do edge to edge painting without, you know, getting some spillage. So I've got a palette knife here. We're going to remove our round watercolor donut pizza cookie whatever you want to call it it, it was kind of like handling a little mini cake every time i had to pick it up and move it into another room another issue i'm seeing now is we do get some seepage and it also looks like i cut some of that first page and that's still on the block and that's going to be a bit difficult to remove. I'm going to try to remove that because obviously I don't really want that. That kind of gets in the way. It doesn't seem like it's that easy to remove. So while I do love this tiny format, it isn't necessarily the easiest to paint with. But we're going to put it to the true field test. We are going to pencil ink and paint at least one watercolor illustration on this teeny tiny round block of watercolor paper. 
So for our field test, we're going to start with a photo of an echinacea that I took while I was at Banting's Nursery here in Southeast Louisiana. I start out with a really loose sketch and refine my details as I go on. And this is true for almost anything I'm drawing. As I mentioned, I'm working from reference, from my own photo reference. And if there's interest, I can do a standalone tutorial of how I do this for those of you who are interested. But I do have an ongoing how to draw and how to paint flowers series that I'll link down in the description below. I hope you guys will check it out. If you're struggling to draw flowers, I've got some great tips in that series for you guys. So the paper takes, uh, yeah, the paper takes pencil quite well. It also takes ink decently well. I'm inking this with a Sakura Pigma FB. This is one of my standard inking brush pins when I'm doing watercolor or when I'm doing Copic marker work. It is marker and watercolor safe. It's fairly inexpensive, lasts a real long time, very easy to use. I can't recommend it enough. You guys see me use this in a lot of my videos. Now on that note, if you guys enjoy my art, if you'd like to see more of it, it. I sure hope you guys will head on over to my Instagram. It's Natto Soup, same as the channel name, or head on over to my art station for a portfolio of my art. If you guys are not familiar with what I do, I am a watercolor comic artist. I create the comic Seven Inch Kara. It's a beautiful watercolor web comic about this Lilliputian girl, only seven inches tall, named Kara, and her adventures setting out to meet humans and befriending humans. So if you enjoy charm all ages comics that deal with family and friendship conflicts. I think you guys will really enjoy 7 Inch Kara and you guys can find that at 7inchkara.com. So I'm going to have links to everywhere you guys can find me down in the description below. I sure do hope you guys will check out more of my art. And if you're not a subscriber yet, I really hope you guys will consider subscribing because I release art tutorials, art reviews on a bi-weekly basis. And having you guys join the art nerd community would really mean a lot to me. So for this field test, I'm using the Core Mini Palette. It's similar to what I use with the Maritini field test. And I will actually compare these two papers later on in the video so keep watching. I also opted to paint a flower kind of keeping in that theme and since I love doing floral paintings because you can never have too many flower illustrations or something. So this does not take masking fluid well at all. We'll talk about that in a minute but basically I'm starting with my base colors with uh, creating the wet into wet look that I want and what I love about core watercolors is you get a lot of really vibrant color. So they're really good for using for paper field tests because I know how they perform. I know what I expect out of them and I've used them so many times that I have a really good baseline comparison. Now this is a cotton rag watercolor paper and it does handle like a cotton rag watercolor paper. It stays open for a while. In fact, I might say it stays open a little too long. I was painting this on quite a humid night and I had a lot of drying issues with this. So if you want a watercolor paper that's going to stay open and workable and you can do a lot of wet and to wet or you want to do more atmospheric light and airy misty watercolors this could be a great paper for you. This size and the fact that there's a glue ring that creates a bit of a resist is not my favorite. I would definitely like to try this again at a larger size. That said, I am going to use the rest of this block before I purchase more. It's not terrible, but there are a few little peccadillos that I think would be solved if I was working at a larger size. But you guys can see that you are able to really layer, you're able to develop a lot of really brilliant colors. And I found that the core watercolors did dry a little bit more muted than they went down, which is, you know, honestly very normal, even for professional grade watercolors and it's just something that you have to be aware of when you're doing watercolor that often it can look very bright and brilliant while it's still wet and it dries down to be a little bit less saturated than you might like. That said this paper can take a lot of layers so this is a great one for building up depth building up shadow, building up contrast and it's also a great one for really delicate wet into wet techniques. So the masking fluid I'm using in this field test is 
the same masking fluid I use all the time. It's one I'm very familiar with, so I'm not trying something tricky or new here. It's Winsor & Newton's Slightly Dyed Yellow Removable Masking Fluid. And I applied it using the same techniques I always use. I did try to allow my paper to dry as much as possible. You don't want to apply masking fluid onto wet watercolor paper. That's a that is a surefire way to get some tearing. And I was trying to reserve some of those brilliant pops of red without having to paint around them. Unfortunately, even though I allowed my paint to dry as much as possible, I did notice that I had a lot of tearing and ripping while I tried to remove the masking fluid. Now, it might have still been a little bit damp during removal, so I'm willing to allow for some user error, but I had to do a lot of corrections to fix all that tearing. It really kind of reminds me of Stonehenge Aqua and Shizen watercolor papers where they maybe don't have as much surface sizing and they might be a little bit more prone to abrasion and tearing. Once this paper is wet, it stays wet for a while also similar to Shizen and Stonehenge and while it's wet and open it's a bit more prone to damage and overworking so it definitely merits a second glance and since it was really humid uh, I wanted to do a second field test to see if my opinions changed any I really wanted to give it a second chance because I really loved it during the mud test and I wanted to see if it would hold up a second time So for my second field test, I'm painting a really brilliant, beautiful, bright rose. This is also a photo that I took, and this was while I was at the Baton Rouge, the Breck Botanical Gardens, and I think I actually have a video about my trip there. So if you live in Louisiana and you're looking for something fun and free to do and you enjoy flowers, you might enjoy visiting those gardens. So hopefully you guys will check out my video on that. And uh, I have a lot of tutorials on how to draw flowers, how to draw roses in particular, how to paint roses in particular. So unless you guys specifically would like me to create a tutorial of my process, you guys can just check those out. If you do want to see a tutorial on how I drew this particular rose or the echinacea we just saw, let me know in the comments. I still have the footage and I would be happy to do that for you guys. But for this, I really wanted to focus on how this paper handles. Now, I do like the really tiny size I think this could be good for plain air sketching I think the round format is so fun you guys know I am a sucker for round papers so this could be a great way to kind of liven up your plain air sketching to add something new and something interesting to your repertoire but I do think this size has some limitations um, there is a glue ring around it that causes a bit of a resist it causes the watercolor to be a little bit funky um and that's a big part of the problem it also stays wet forever and it might just be too small a size to really allow for it to dry out in a timely fashion you do get 20 sheets though so there is a good amount of bang for your buck with this one so for my second field test i'm using the paul rubens watercolor since they have a lot of bright beautiful colors and I thought it would work really well with the Paul Rubens paper. I have a tendency to pair Paul Rubens with Paul Rubens and I really like this palette. So if you're interested in a great affordable professional grade palette, I hope you guys will check out my review for this one. It is a really hot day on the day that I painted this field test and it wasn't particularly humid and there was no rain. I also have a full house dehumidifier that was running during both field tests to try and help with the humidity control. So if you can control the humidity you don't paint on a rainy day you have the ac on you have the dehumidifier running like i was doing for the second one the paper stays open for a nice wet for a nice amount of whew, the paper stays open and paintable for nice wet into wet techniques and it doesn't get too pulpy but you do have to be careful about water control, especially on a smaller size like this one. Water has a tendency to bead up around the edges, so you're gonna wanna remove your excess water as you go because it's just gonna build up and not really dry. And this paper does stay wet and open for a longer period of time, which can make a painting this small more of a challenge. But you guys saw that for this one, I'm really leaning in with these wet into wet 
Um, the, the rose I'm painting is this brilliant hot red and yellow combination and it's got this beautiful soft gradient. So I thought this would be a really good test for this paper because it's gonna utilize techniques that I think this paper is really designed for, that it works really well for. I tend to over render everything I paint. I'm a layers gal, I love glazes, I love layers, I love creating lighting effects with that. And this paper might stay open just a little bit too long for that to really be feasible for me. But there aren't really issues with the colors turning to mud, with the colors getting soupy or reactivating, so long as you allow the paper to dry out before you try to glaze on top of it. And that's kind of the trick for Shizen, Shizen and Stonehenge as well. It can seem like you're painting a mess, so let it dry out for an hour, come back to it, and you might be surprised with how much better it looks after it dries. So I would not necessarily recommend this particular paper for people who are newer to watercolor, who maybe haven't learned when to step away and let something dry and when to just keep pushing and try to mold it into what you're looking for. And that's something I'm still learning as well. So I feel like I can say that without stepping on any toes. But for a more experienced watercolor paper or someone who learns well from other people's mistakes, this could be a great fit for you. Now I don't know the price off the top of my head, but it will be down in the description as well as a link to where you can purchase it if you're watching this and you think this paper could be a great fit. So this paper does stay wet and open for a longer period of time, which makes a painting this small more of a challenge. So it does require some patience that you might not have to put into with some of your other cotton rag papers. It definitely requires a lot more patience than cellulose paper. So if you're used to cellulose watercolor papers, this is gonna be kind of a culture shock. I also had some difficulty in removing the paper from the pad and it does leave some paper residue and I think this is mostly due to how small this is and the surface area compared to the paper itself. That kind of begs the question, which watercolor round is right for you? We have the Paul Rubens watercolor rounds over here. I only did two of them compared to the four Maritini watercolor paintings that I did, but I think I was able to get a pretty good idea of how these handle. So compared to the Maritini watercolor rounds, the Paul Rubens are block bound and the glue goes almost all the way around, leaving about an inch opening, and they're also attached to chipboard. So it's pretty solid, but the cover on this thing, once you've originally removed it, you're gonna have to find a way to secure it. You could use a rubber band, you could use some clips, you could even tape it down if you want to, but it's not like pad bound where you would just flip the, the top back down on top of it. It's not prone to warping or buckling because it is block bound and they do dry fairly flat. The colors seem more vibrant on the Paul Rubens watercolor paper and I used some of the same watercolors that I used on the Maritini. So both of these were painted using the Core Mini palette and I feel like this one I was able to achieve much more color depth than I was able to achieve on the Maritini watercolor paper. This was painted with the Paul Rubens watercolor, and I don't believe I used the Paul Rubens watercolor on the Maritini, but you can see that I, or at least to me, I can achieve a lot more color depth than I was really able to get with the Maritini, regardless of what brand of watercolors I used on them. They're 100% cotton rag, as opposed to the Maritini, which is a mixed fiber, it's 25% cotton and the rest is German paper pulp. So not a whole lot of cotton rag in this one. They do stay wet for a long time. Once you wet it, it stays open. It can be easily damaged, prone to overworking. It takes a long time to dry out and for you to be able to get 
nice crisp layers and glazes on top of it. So if you like to paint fast, that could be a problem for you. It doesn't like masking fluid. I, it really tore the paper up. Now I haven't tried masking fluid on the Martini watercolor rounds. I don't think at least. Um, I think it would probably handle a little bit better because it just has a different surface texture. It's not as open, it's much tighter, um, which is pretty typical for cellulose and mixed fiber papers. And the whole Rubens has a much more pronounced cold press surface texture because it's an actual cold press rather than having a cold press texture embossed onto it. Now the Maritini, like I said, is a mixed fiber paper. It's cellulose and cotton. They are prone to warping. They did have the nickname Danger Pringle. And even though these have been stored, kind of pressed flat in between some heavier objects, they do have a tendency to want a Danger Pringle as soon as they get out from underneath those heavier objects. The colors to me are more muted. And because there isn't as much texture on the paper, when you're working with granulation, like with the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing Palette, instead of getting that beautiful subtle granulation as the particles fall into the paper fibers, it kind of starts to look a little bit muddy. Whereas on the Paul Rubens, you do have that texture for that granulation to fall into. So you can get some really nice subtle effects. It does dry more quickly though, which is great for smaller, less serious watercolor studies, which is why I could produce four of these as opposed to two of these. The metal travel tin travels a bit more easily, I think, than the block because it keeps your individual sheets protected and these are just individual die cut sheets with a bit of foam in there. Honestly, once I use this thing down a little bit more, I can probably, I can maybe even double stack it now and take it with me on vacation or on the go. So that could be fun. Um, I'm certainly gonna hold on to this tin after I've used up the paper to use it with my Paul Rubens round. Um, it does need to be secured when you're painting these. I used washi tape for these. It did tear up the backs a little bit, but not really in a particularly noticeable way. And even secured, it still wanted to danger pringle. It just didn't danger pringle as much. And it dries a bit faster than the Paul Rubens papers. Both take penciling well. You can draw on these, no problem. They take erasing, okay. I didn't notice any paper degradation or any ghosting of the ink. Both take inking well and both were inked using Pigma FB brush pens, so kind of a standard there. And both are fairly affordable. I purchased both of these on AliExpress. You might be able to find, I used to be able to find this one on Amazon. I haven't seen it on Amazon for a while and it's getting harder to find on AliExpress. So if you have a source for this, let me know. Paul Rubens is becoming more popular in the US, so I feel like we're gonna be able to find more Paul Rubens products at a wider variety of retail outlets in the near future. So this is just gonna get easier to find. So what are the pros and cons of this teeny tiny Paul Rubens 100% cotton rag watercolor block? Well, the pros are it's Paul Rubens 100% cotton watercolor paper. It handles for the most part like the bigger block and takes layering well. So if you like the larger 100% cotton Paul Rubens paper, this is, seems to be the same paper. It loves granulation as you guys can see here and it can really take a lot of layering. There's lots of little nooks and crannies in this paper. It also takes some opaque color. It takes a lot of layering. It takes a lot of working. It's a paper that loves wet into wet. So if you enjoy painting more diffused misty watercolors, this could be a great fit for you. It handles wet into wet like a champ, like I said, and the format is a lot of fun. I love round watercolor pads. Now the cons. While the paper is a quality paper, water control is a challenge on such a small pad and oversaturation is far too easy. This was a problem that I had over here. Water tends to pool along the edges of the paper, which I think is particularly apparent in this Echinacea illustration. Not as much in the rose, but you can still see it along the edges. So water control is more of a challenge on this paper, I've found. Removing it from the block cleanly can be a challenge because it wants to leave paper behind, which is difficult to remove. This is particularly apparent here on the Echinacea, where it still left some paper from the mud test. 
And the long open time can be a boon or a bust depending on how you paint, but for something this small, I would prefer a faster dry time. So what's my verdict? I would probably really like this in a larger size, so in the future I'll probably order the bigger one. This would make it comparable to the Magnani 1404 Toscano paper that I reviewed not super long ago. And if it were more accessible, so sold at more stores, if you could go into your favorite brick and mortar art supply store and find this, it would be probably more affordable and a great alternative. As it is though, it's a fun little watercolor paper. It definitely has some quirks and I'm definitely looking forward to painting on it and playing around with it more in the future. So if you're interested in those adventures, I hope you guys will follow me over on Instagram at instagram.com slash natosoup or Twitter at twitter.com slash natosoup because I share my art on both of those platforms all the time. I'll also try to remember to share it in the community tab. So keep an eye out for that. All right, so that was the Paul Rubens 100% cotton rag watercolor block. This is a teeny tiny block, but they do have larger ones available. There are 20 sheets of watercolor paper in this little block. If you enjoy texture, this block has a nice pronounced watercolor texture. And if you enjoy beautiful wet and to wet washes, misty, atmospheric granulation and if you want the ability to layer 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 this block is an excellent choice for you i did find that the longer open time similar to stonehenge and similar to shizen may be a bit of a challenge for people who want to do smaller quicker uh watercolor sketches like you can achieve with the martini watercolor paper since this is a mixed fiber watercolor paper but if you are looking for a great cotton rag watercolor paper in a round block format and an affordable price point and you don't mind going to aliexpress the paul rubens block might be exactly what you're looking for so i am always interested in reviewing more interesting innovative watercolor supplies so if there's something i haven't reviewed yet something that's caught your fancy let me know down in the comments below i am always interested in checking out what's new and what's exciting i hope this review slash field test was inspiring for you guys and i hope it'll help you guys make art a habit thank you guys so much for watching i hope you all have a wonderful day and if you enjoy reviews like this one please consider supporting the work that i do on patreon i want to give a huge huge thanks to the names you guys are going to see in just a minute those are my amazing patrons and they make reviews like this one possible so thank you guys so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye guys!